Good morning, church. We are blessed to have you here today. Today is World Communion Sunday, and so as a church, we will join with believers worldwide as we enjoy the gifts and blessings that our God gives us. And so we enter into that worship today, and we thank you for your presence. Um, in your bulletins this morning, you'll see uh, lots of activities going on, um, but we've had a this has been a busy place the last few weeks. We've had a wonderful rummage sale. You're, you'll hear more about that later on in the service. Uh, we had uh, a wedding here last night that went great for the, the Bridgman family. Um, indeed, we celebrate together with all the joys of ministry. Uh, but I do want to highlight uh, a couple of events. Our Strive uh, ministry, that's for uh, 20s through early 50s, uh, couples... Uh, singles and families. We are meeting at the Vortherms today for a barbecue uh, around noon, and it will go till, um, till whenever, uh, but you're all invited to that. You'll also see our new group, Alive, uh, which is 55 plus. Uh, we're having a, a fellowship event on the, I believe it's the 15th of October, so you'll, you'll see all of those. I um, also want to highlight uh, today in Rochester, the Franklin Graham uh, Rochester Live Tour is the last stop is there this week um, or today. Um, it'll be at Soldier Field, I believe, at uh, 4 o'clock. So if anyone's interested, you can make your way over there. Uh, we will not be going as a group, but uh, it is a wonderful ministry. And I believe... Um, see, Britt, I knew there was... Ah, Adventures Club. Uh, Adventures Club, our new second through fifth grade ministry, uh, they're having an event next week uh, going to Farmer John's Pumpkin Patch, but you need to let Nora, Laura know or the church office know by Thursday. Um, so with that, we, we thank you for your presence, and um, we do acknowledge uh, today it's a tough day to choose to come to church when our beloved Vikings are playing right now. In London, um, no updates. If Jim Huskins around, we're not giving any updates. Um, he, he made a request, but uh, thank you for coming this morning. Um, indeed, as we uh, seek to worship our Lord and Savior in spirit and in truth. Now, as we begin to worship, I invite you to stand, and we also welcome you at home who are joining us uh, as we sing hymn number 671. Uh, so stand and join us in worship this morning.
join me in the prayer of confession found upon the screen. Merciful God, in your gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste the land and pollute the seas. The fears and jealousies that we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination and freedom, of intellect and reason, and have turned them into bonds of oppression. Lord, have mercy upon us. Heal and forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. And let us hear an assurance of pardon from Ephesians. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we are dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. may be seated. Our Old Testament lesson this morning can be found in Leviticus chapter 13 verses 1 through 8 and can be found on page 98 of your Old Testament pew Bible. And we know in Leviticus we do hear and see about laws and how to uh, handle certain situations, diseases, and so forth. And we will see here Uh, some scripture about leprosy. So it is Leviticus chapter 13, verses 1 through 8, on page 98 of your Old Testament pew Bible. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a person has on the skin of his body a swelling or an eruption or a spot, and it turns into a leprous disease on the skin of his body, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the sons of the priest. The priest shall examine the disease on the skin of his body, and if the hair in the diseased area has turned white, and the disease appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is a leprous disease. After the priest has examined him, he shall pronounce him ceremonially unclean. But if the spot is white in the skin of his body, and appears no deeper than the skin, and the hair in it has not turned white, The priest shall confine the diseased person for seven days. The priest shall examine him on the seventh day, and if he sees that the disease is checked and the disease has not spread in the skin, then the priest shall confine him seven days more. The priest shall examine him again on the seventh day, and if the disease has abated and the disease has not spread in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only an eruption and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the eruption spreads in the skin, after he has shown himself to the priest for his cleansing, he shall appear again before the priest. The priest shall make an examination, and if the eruption has spread in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprous disease. And we do thank God for his word this morning. Uh, Age-appropriate Bible stories, and she had shown me some of the books that she wanted, and so we got those, and... Or she'll show me like a new toy that she's excited about because she's always wanting the kids to be engaged and to interact with them well. And so she has just done such a fantastic job. And so we're so thankful to have you here. Thank you. And you mind if we pray over you? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for Lisa and the ministry she has had here, for the love she has poured out upon your children. 
And God, we just ask that you continue to let that love flow through her and that it can be felt not just by the little ones, but by everyone alike, that they can feel and see your love through her. And we thank you for the time she has devoted here. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. And we do have... You're not leaving yet. You're not leaving yet. <laughs> and so this is on behalf of Session in the church, and oh, we just want thank to thank you. you so much. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Yes. But you heard her 30 years from today. We'll be back up here, so... It's now time in our service in which we come before God in prayer, and so I would direct you to the prayer and praise section in your bulletins, and again, if you're at home, if you have prayer requests, or if you're here sitting in the pews, we have prayer cards in front of you uh, that you can fill out and place in the offering plates as they're passed uh, this morning. Um, also, we are uh, continuing to pass our friendship pads uh, so if you're on an end of an aisle and you have a, a purple friendship pad in front of you, uh, uh, write your, your membership down or if you're a visitor and then pass that along. Uh, but we also do want to highlight um, our wonderful rummage sale. And I see Celine Schultz in the back eagerly waiting to share. And Yes, let's give a round of applause to those who helped and just... So the rummage sale was again a huge success. We'll be hearing more about uh, uh, the amount of money that was raised that goes directly to missions. Um, And then the unique thing is whatever is left and hasn't been taken, then we distribute to other ministries and uh, individuals in need. So it is a huge ministry uh, that is meant to, to care for God's children. But it could not happen without the endless hours of our staff, our volunteers, and the directors of the program, the PW. Um, It was uh, just 
a huge undertaking, but a wonderful event. And so thank you um, for everything that uh, has been done uh, for that ministry. And so now we'll, if there are any other prayer requests that we'd like to share. Yes, Kay. Thank you, Kay, for um, sharing that, and I know you have a personal connection to Florida, as many of us do, um, and just the devastation that occurred there um, as they are trying to uh, recover, uh, still determining loss of life um, and the extent of the damage. Um, uh, all we can do is pray, and we bow before our God, and we know that He is the God of, uh, of great things and miraculous healings. And recovery, and so we will lift that region up in our prayers, uh, not just today, but as we move forward. So let us, oh, yes, one more. All right, well, we are praying for Terry Briggs, and uh, uh, great that the, her cardio version went well, and so we celebrate that. So let us uh, go before our God in prayer. Lord Jesus, we come into your presence today, and God, we, we just bow down before you as we realize that today is World Communion Sunday, as we celebrate and acknowledge you with believers throughout your creation. Lord, let us never forget that we are an interconnected faith. It doesn't matter about denominations or traditions. It matters about you. And so today, Lord, we bow before you. We thank you for the gift of communion that you have prepared for us by dying on the cross. And Lord, we know that this meal uh, serves as a, a reminder for each one of us to um, understand the depth of your love that you have for your children. So Lord, today we praise your name. We thank you for the gift of love that you have given each one of us. And Lord, we also um, come before you with our needs. God, we pray for the devastation that has occurred in Florida uh, with the loss of life, and loss of property, loss of safety and protection. Uh, God, we just ask for your healing hand to come over that region and to care for those who are in need. Lord, we pray for uh, Terry Briggs. We thank you, God, that she is uh, doing better and that the cardioversion procedure went well, and we continue to lift her up in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the rummage sale that was so successful and all the work that went into it to raise funds for your children in need. We praise you for the good work that was done, and we know that these seeds that were going to be planted through the uh, celebrates and acknowledges the, the passing of her uh, father, John, seven years ago. And we ask for strength for her. Uh, we lift up uh, the Carlson family with their international, Compassion International child who passed away, Enzo, uh, three years old, Lord. We just pray for comfort and blessing for his family. And Lord, we lift up Tim Hughes and continue to pray for him as he's uh, nearing the end of life as well. But God, we celebrate the joys um, of Deanna Hastings, who's out of the hospital now and had a wonderful a baptism blessing um, last week. I uh, praise you for Stephanie Olmstead as she has graduated from her nursing program. And God, we celebrate with you uh, Lisa Tapp and just the joy of ministry that she has provided for this congregation for so many years. And so, Lord, we, we thank you for all that she has done. And so, God, in the midst of the heartbreak, we also celebrate the joys of life. And so it is both with our pain and with our joy that we continue to bow before you in worship. And we thank you for all that you do for us. 
And we pray this in your name. Amen. And now as I invite the ushers forward uh, to take this morning's offering, um, let us just remember that uh, our gifts are ones that we give back to our God because he has first given them to us. And so as we celebrate the joys that he has given us, let us return that um, to him so that his children can better know him and feel his love. Lord God, we pray that you will use these gifts to bring about your kingdom here on earth so all may know of your grace and experience your truth. We offer this to you. Amen. And I encourage you to turn to your neighbors and greet each other with the peace of Christ. Turn to your seats. I'd like to dismiss the children three years old to second grade for Sunshine Singers with Miss Emma in the back. Well, have you uh, open up your Bibles to uh, Luke chapter 5? We're going to be reading verses 12 through 16. It's on page 62 of the New Testament. And again, we are progressing through the Gospel of Luke. Um, Last week, we looked at, if you will, uh, the job description of the Messiah and all that the Messiah was coming to do. But today, we're focused on the purpose of the Messiah. And we will see in a few moments how we find 
the purpose statements of Christ um, given for why he came and what his purpose truly is. And we see that purpose realized in our story this morning as Jesus interacts with the leper. And Pastor Britt read earlier from Leviticus uh, chapter 13 in which we hear uh, the painstaking process of how to deal with this a horrendous disease and what it meant in that community. And so again, let us uh, read from Luke 5, 12 through 16. Once when he was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he ordered him to tell no one. Go, he said, and show yourself to the priest, and as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing for a testimony to them. But now more than ever, the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and be cured of their diseases. Served by them or by anyone else, he came to reach out to those who needed his help. So Christ's first statement is, I am here to serve you by loving you, by reaching out, by extending my hand to all who would receive it. And then secondly, we find that Christ has an example in his life of giving life. And not just giving an ordinary life, but giving it abundantly. John 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come so they might have life and have it abundantly. See, for this leper, he had no life. Back in that, the ancient times, leprosy was a death sentence, but not a quick and easy death. Slow and painful over years, the body itself would deteriorate, and the leper eventually would, would give in and would pass away. Today we know this disease as Hansen's disease, as a skin condition that still affects many throughout our world but can now be easily treated by medication and proper care. But back in the time of Christ, there was no treatment. This disease would attack the nervous system. It would go into uh, the brain and the spinal cord, and then it would spread to other parts of the body. It would affect the hands, the feet, the face, the earlobes. Patients would experience disfigurement of the skin and bones and twisted limbs, curling of the fingers. This was a horrific disease. And when you had it, basically your life was over. And so Christ is now coming to this man who has the incurable disease. It is highly contagious so that this leper is supposed to be isolated. There were uh, regulations as how far you could get to a leper before you became unclean. But Jesus was not concerned about that. He allowed that man to come into his presence, even though he was ceremonially unclean. And he responded to him by reaching out and telling him, that I am here to give you new life. Not just to heal you physically, but I am here to cure you spiritually. And so the man came and begged for his life, and Jesus gave it to him. He gave abundant life through his outstretched hand. And then finally we see that our Lord came to seek and to save the lost. 
Luke 19, verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. There was no greater example of who was lost than this leper. Than this man who stood without any hope, without any life, without any future in front of him. That is who Jesus came to save. Jesus touches those who need to be touched. Jesus cares for those who need to be cared for. He responds to those who are struggling. Christ brought healing to this leper's body, but more importantly, he healed his mind. He healed his soul. He gave him a hope and a purpose. We see in the verification of Scripture. Christ wanted to adhere to the letter of the law that we find in Leviticus. He has brought restoration to people's lives. He has brought salvation to people's hearts. That is what this meal represents. As we come into His presence this morning to receive this gift, we are receiving the grace of our Lord who is reaching out to each one of us. An offering that he has made because he loves us. So today, let us come before our God, asking him to heal us, proclaiming to him that he is, if he is willing, then make us clean. That is what our God is offering for us. So, my prayer this morning, in a minute, as we receive these elements, that we can receive the forgiving, the healing, and the redemptive hand of our Lord. Because indeed, He is able and He is willing. Amen. Now let us stand for our communion hymn, hymn number 693, Bread of the World. you will wash us clean through your outstretched hand. Restore our souls and renew our hearts, Lord. We praise you for the gift of Christ who went to the cross for each one of us to experience death so that we might not have to. And Lord, now let us uh, return this worship to you in thankfulness and gratitude for all that you bestow upon your children. And so, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And now, Lord, we ask that you will hear us as we pray the Lord that Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, the Lord on the night of his arrest He took the bread amongst his disciples, and after he blessed it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And every time we eat of this bread or drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. 
And it is our tradition for you to come forward to receive the elements. And as you are given the bread and the cup, we ask you then to take that back to your pews through the outside aisles. And then we will take the elements together again as one church worshiping one Lord. And to you at home as well, we encourage you uh, to prepare those elements now as well. And so I'd like to invite forward our elders to help in the service of our communion uh, this morning. Please come forward through the center aisle. Remember your love and your saving grace. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. And now let us stand and sing our closing hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, number 106. <laughs> 